Good morning, Liz Taylor, Managing Director of TLC. How are good you? Good morning, how are you? I'm really good, and yourself? Yeah. This is most strange, but hey-ho, exciting <laughs> and challenging. Here I am. <laughs> yeah, it's great to have you on board today, and we're really looking forward to your presentation so, and finding out how you coped under the current situation. So are we good to go? We're good to go. You should go for it. Well, hi, everybody, who I can't see, and this is totally bizarre, but um, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here and support these guys in doing this virtual um, exhibition, really, for want of a better word. And I think that last night's announcement, you know, gave us all butterflies again in where we're going and what are we doing. But I'm going to tell you a little bit this morning about my perception of it how I've survived and how I shall survive. And I hope that it will give you all some insight and some incentive. Um, I don't have a crystal ball, but I have a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. So let's go. Um, I'm Liz Taylor. I'm CEO of a successful event company, the Taylor Lynn Corporation, an entrepreneur, a hospitality consultant, a podcaster, author, and an unstoppable business tour de force, or so I'm told. And over the next 30 minutes, I want to share my journey through the last six months. So if you're looking for total honesty, you're going to get it. Shit and all, the highs, the lows, and the craziness that we call lockdown. Importantly though, after 36 years working in the event industry, I want to explain why I'm still discovering new things about myself and my business and why coronavirus gave me the space to choose personal ev evolution rather than pivot. The time to understand the power inside of me and indeed the power inside of you is the key to the bus our business success. Now, March the 17th is my birthday. I actually share it with Ruth Langs Langsford, who's Eamon Holmes' wife, broadcaster, and a great friend of mine. Totally irrelevant to this conversation that we're having, I know, but I'm a woman of detail. Anyway, this year I was celebrating with lunch at the Ivy in Manchester, a table of 20. And for those of you confused, I actually do have 20 friends. But it didn't happen. It was the day when the world stopped. A deadly virus was ferociously, ferociously attacking us, irrespective of geography, gender, religion or status. And everyone was faced with a level of uncertainty that no one could comprehend. The government stepped in with rules and regulations that we clung on to like straws and introduced some level of financial support to persuade us all to believe that we would survive this crash. The only common denominator was the unknown. And I realized immediately that mental health was paramount. And in order to keep a furloughed team engaged, I had to switch to mother mode. I insisted on daily motivational chats, stuff we never got time to do in the office. We had a group WhatsApp and very swiftly, I witnessed strengths that had been hidden amongst the daily challenges of running an events business. That's my, if you've heard the doorbell, that's my Amazon delivery, so forgive me, but you know, I am human. We are all onto Amazon. So the daily challenges of running an events business, and I liked what I saw. And together, we focused on using social media to post quotes that all contributed to our survival kit. And I established Hospitality Rise, an event being held in 2021 with a star-studded cast. So if you're listening, you are allowed to apply for an invitation as it's invitation only. On the plus side, I've, it brought the nation together, just like we Brits do so well. It produced Colonel Sir Tom Moore, who simply walked around his garden to fill his days and ended up a national hero. It provided a very long overdue awakening of the NHS, who rose to the unprecedented challenge and literally saved our souls. 
And for those who didn't survive it, it made us all realise what's important and what isn't. A serious priorities check. What I noticed the most is that we all smiled, smiled at each other. If you went a walk, everyone acknowledged you. An unspoken bond that felt extremely comforting. For me, I'd been here before. Recession, recession, recession. In similar, if not as devastating circumstances. And when a recession threatens your business, you sink or you swim. I became Katie Ledecky, I think I pronounced, pronounced that correctly, and Google if you don't know who she is. So this was just another challenge and I had to make some very swift decisions, not only for myself, but for those who rely on me both personally and professionally. What I realized from the outset that never had there been a better time when my gut instinct was the way to go. So I rolled up my sleeves. I filled every minute of the day supporting an industry I helped create some 35 years ago. I accepted every opportunity to be interviewed by the media, using it as a platform to reinforce my brand. I created projects to be involved in and I accepted invitations to host lectures that I usually presented to a live audience, this time on Zoom encouraging MMU students to participate in Q&As, roundtable de debates, Zoom webinars, you name it, I was there and I was ready. And now I have secured a collaboration to partner with Manchester's key body. Together, we're to open up the market marketplace once again. So with Marketing Manchester, watch this space because from February onwards, we are going to start mending our wings. So I watched and I waited in the knowledge that one day within the next 12 months, live events would return. I decided I had a premonition or maybe it was my experience that nothing whatsoever would happen until next summer. I hung my hat up, last March, and I didn't have any other expectation. And with that to focus on, it was much easier for me to have a strategy. I didn't make the mistakes that a lot of the casualties of our industries have made, and I did not pivot. I stuck to my strategy and sought every bit of financial support that I could in order to ensure that I could keep my business afloat with furlough and loans something I had never ever looked to in 30 odd years. I had never had an overdraft, but new experience. Something that was now necessary. And once I had funds in place, I was able to ensure my small but dedicated team that they would have a job. Come hell or high water, they would have their job. And I took a leap and I invested a significant amount of money of my personal money in a new website, in the knowledge that it would give us a much louder voice when we come out of this chaos. I offered clients an opportunity to rebook, but I did not refund deposits. I have contracts, I have legal documents, and that's what they were there for. They were contractually obliged, they were non-refundable, but with, they were with, they were the best in the business. It was tough, but ultimately I was respected for it. And each and every client trusted me to negotiate a way forward. Suppliers called me like I had a crystal ball, but I took it as a compliment because they knew that if anyone could survive, I would. I was in the driving seat and I had an obligation to carry on. During this time, one thing I realized, you have to forgive me because I am only human, as I said earlier. <laughs> During this time. Oh my God, guys. Um, I realized that, like it or not, I am my brand. Liz Taylor is the USP of the Taylor Link Corporation. And so I harness my strengths and convert it into a strategy. 
don't think for one minute that I wasn't nervous and I still am as I'm talking to you. But I've always been a believer in any challenge that I've been faced with and certainly any job I might have tended for. What is the very worst that could happen? The very, very worst, the very worst is that my business folds and goes bump and I have to find a way to secure a future. So at least I know what I'm dealing with. And then accepting that there's only one way and that's to go up, to forge your way up. My secret tool is and always has been brand. I believe that brand is king and it was time to acknowledge that I am my brand. My USP is me and so I stepped into action. I'd been considering setting up a consultancy since 2018. I had it named, I had the limited company done and I had a bank account open and it was LTC, a variation of TLC, associated but not associated. But again, I would thought about it and it was to establish a brand. It was the Liz Taylor Consultancy. It was at the time a new challenge that I wanted to pursue whilst my team moved the events business forward under my guide, guidance, with me focusing on being the creative director and the girls doing what they do best, and that's delivering the events. But it wasn't to be. I took the opportunity in March and I went hell for leather. I opened my black book in the knowledge that my experience and business acumen and respect would be an asset to any hospitality business. And in doing so, I have secured Ashley Hall, which is a Cheshire estate of great magnitude. And I'm working with the Brooks family. And we started in the summer, the Tatton, Sto Tatton Social, which was opening up the grounds every Sunday to families, socially distanced, fairground rides, food offerings, stalls. It was the most exciting project actually that I'd worked on in a long time. And I'm very much looking forward to continuing that next year. I worked for a short time for a restaurant group and I'm reconnecting with them next year. Gary Neville and Ryan Giggs have asked me to join force with them and support their GG hospitality group over the next 12 months and a clothing brand. So very varied, not really what I was used to, but all had one thing in common, strategy, brand, self-development, knowledge, and a black book. All in three weeks, I opened an office at home, a wicker basket with the essentials in it. And encouraged by my PR guru, Sarah Lewis, who has been on, with this, on this journey with me far too long. And she's probably the only person that I listen to. And I hope she's not listening because if she knows that she's the only person I listen to, then that means that I lose, um, you know, lose a little bit of credibility. But um, I persuaded her and we knuckled down and we focused on this new opportunity. In addition, I launched my podcasts, which were events that made me. So if you haven't listened to them, please go on Spotify or Apple or wherever you listen, because I, because I had 12 weeks of interviewing the most amazing and interesting people. And I got my little black book out of celebrities and they were stuck at home. So like me, they were only too happy to have a chat and a giggle about their life's journey. And my next um, series starts in a couple of weeks and is more business focused. So I open with Got One and Tom Kerridge and a whole host of entrepreneurs who have literally built their own businesses and their own brand from very, very little. Assisting me in creating a brand that I could see had huge potential and would and will support my event business. And between you and me, I'm dead proud because during COVID in the last six months, I have set up, established and got on the map a very successful consultancy business, which will go hand in hand with the event business when it returns with retainers that are providing me with an income so that I can save for the rainy day when, when the rain stops. I took what some considered to be a crazy step in investing in a new website, 
and it launched last week to great applause. So if you haven't looked at it, please do. It's tlc-ltd.co.uk. And a fabulous website for the consultancy, which is liz-taylor-consulting.co.uk. When competitors use social media to share country walks, well-being and pivot, I sat at my computer seven days a week, 10 hours a day, in the knowledge that the economy around my brands would not disappear. So you've got to have the confidence in yourself. You've got to believe in yourself. You always, I go back to what's the worst thing that could happen and you know what the worst thing, and it can't be any worse that, you know, you, you, it can't be any worse than it is at the moment. But if you can deal with what is the worst thing that can happen, then you can deal with any challenge that is that faces you. And for any of you out there want to chat to me or maybe have a bit of a mentoring session, please email because I feel really, really strongly about the future and about growth. The most common question I get asked is what motivates you? Well, like all of us, um, a shot of vodka never really goes amiss, but um, I do have a bit of a regime. I love the treadmill. I hate running, but half an hour in the morning and the endorphins give me a sense of well-being that's better than any tablet or glass of wine. What I've done during lockdown is I've actually paced myself. I've realised I don't have to be in the office at half past eight in the morning. So I get up, I, I go on the treadmill, have my shower, always put my makeup on because how you see yourself is how other people see you. That's hugely important. And you are your brand. You are the person. And then I sit down at my desk at maybe 10, half 10. And my desk is currently in the kitchen. And I just work till I'm till, till whenever. There's really no clock, half seven, eight o'clock. Prior to that, I was in the office at half past eight. We closed at five o'clock. We went home. I'd have a glass of wine. I'd go to bed. And I actually quite like this diverse way of working. We will be going back into the office in November because I think it's hugely important that we all have a focus and the girls are floundering a little bit. And, I, and, and to me, that's very important. But I won't be in at half eight. I'm actually going to restructure my day. I have a brilliant saying. I made this up myself. And um, I used to write songs when I was little. And I did have a contract and um, I played the piano. So I'm all a bit sort of, you know, arty farty. But I agree with this. You, you're never, ever too old to learn. Um, my personal challenges have taught me to be less aggressive and to listen. Not forgetting that I'm always right, but I am less aggressive. And I have a brilliant saying which came to me on one of my treadmill runs. And it is this. Allowing someone to disagree with you is a sign of integrity, but persuading them to agree with you is a sign of excellence. And carry that with you, whatever you do and wherever you go, because you will be faced with those moments when you really want to shout from the rooftops, no, I'm right and you're wrong, but allow them to disagree and then persuade them to agree. And so, with the, my second series of podcasts in the bag, I have a consultancy business that's just employed two part-time staff, an event business that is leaping into 2021 with some amazing projects from the end of May onwards, and they will happen because I'm telling you that they will happen. The belt remains very tight. Complacency is not a consideration. Commitment and enthusiasm is my aphrodisiac. And once again, I shall rise from the ashes to be stronger and better than before. And I'm going to leave you with one of Albert Einstein's um, comments when he sent, summed it up best. And he said, adversity introduces a man to himself. Think about it because it's true.
It's for such a refreshing and honest speech there. It's really important to obviously know how um, you've now pivoted your business to the consultancy side of things. And obviously one of the, one of the key things that has come out of this last six months has been the focus on wellbeing and how do you kind of look at the well-being of your staff and kind of support that? Can I just interrupt you? Because you, you opened with the word pivot. I absolutely yeah, hate yeah. And listen, listen, I'm sorry, guys, because I'm actually <laughs> eight minutes short of my half hour spot. So forgive me. And I know that I did read some of it. I had so much to say. And at my age, I can't remember it all without a few notes. But um, I didn't pivot, Tarika. And that's the real message okay. that I want. I want to get across because I think what you have to do is embrace what you have and make it grow. Mm -hmm. So I, I added to an existing business um, that, and, and it complements each other. I didn't shut down and think, right, I'm going to go into virtual events because that's not the future of my industry. Um, and I do feel very strongly about that. So sorry to tell you off, but. Don't it's fine. It's, 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 it's industry buzzwords, as I'm sure you're aware. I know, but everyone, I know. and it's kind of programmed it in us now to use that question. But um, I want to say some shout outs. We've got some shout outs for you. We've got um, a hello from Jessica Southworth. Um, we've got a shout out from Becky Woods, who's now living in Dubai. She wants to say hello to you. Um, oh, so many goodness. people. Yeah, so many people are commenting on your speech and how refreshingly honest that was and so positive that's what we need in this time positivity and yeah that definitely definitely has you know given us all something to think about um well, and we've um, loved I hope so I hope so because I love your show and I love your brand and you know we've met a few times and I have been involved previously and what I loved about it last year was um the whole thing was so well presented and it was edgy and it was cutting edge. And I think that, you know, that's where we are as an industry. And so I'm, you know, I, I was thrilled to be on. I hope we've got some questions. Um, Definitely. To, to, uh, Definitely. Everyone's been commenting on how they loved your podcast. So if you want to tell us a little bit more about who's up next on that, um, who you've got for the next season and how they can listen to it, that would be great. Um, so, oh God, you're asking me and I'm not very technical, but the podcast is called Events That Made Me. And I used the first season to delve into my black book of celebs. And also I'd never done a podcast before. And it's quite difficult because for those that you don't know, I, um, you know, I, I suppose I have sort of a fairly sardonic sense of humor and that's reflected in how I communicate with the, with the, with the mates, the people that I was interviewing. So I had to go through right through Wikipedia and ask them what three events that made them and then turn it into something that brought out their personality, their humor. And some of the stories were really, really interesting. My One of my favorites was Linda Plant, who isn't a celebrity, but she's been on The Apprentice. She's a businesswoman like me. We have an awful yeah. lot in common. And her story was, was really, really inspiring. Um, and so, but we, I just, the one thing that I decided that I missed or, or going into the next series is that I want it to be business driven. And when you listen to Gok Wan, um, I mean, I loved interviewing him and we didn't know each other. I just sent him an email. I managed to get his email address because I do that sort of thing. <laughs> if I want something, I get it. And he replied, yes, I'll do it. And I've done that with a number of people. I was saw Tom Kerridge at the Bull and Bear in Manchester the other week. And I went into the kitchen and I said, I know I shouldn't be in here, Tom, but I want you to do my podcast. And he goes, oh, yeah, 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 okay, fine. So it's having the chutzpah to go out and do what you want. And I hope that the next series brings a little bit of business acumen into it. They're on Spotify, they're on Apple Podcasts. You have to leave a nice Brilliant. review. If you don't leave a, leave a nice review, I'll come and get you. And I think we start, I think it's the end of October, but I have to check with my producer. It's great. We'll definitely all be listening here from Team v &E. Um Just a quick question on going back to the consultancy business and the rebranding of everything. Um, someone's commented here on what, why, what made you decide to rebrand your events website at this time? Why did you feel you needed to? 
because I didn't want to uh, listen we are we're we're in a hole that we're going to come out of um and I just felt it was a great opportunity for me to come out and shout I didn't want to come out with old news old photographs oh I wanted to come out refreshed with a new brand and my website is my selling tool everyone likes to see pictures they come to me well after they've looked at what I do what we do because I don't do it single-handedly but so for me it was very important I thought you know what everyone's in lockdown they'll probably will have looked at my old website a million times if they're interested in the event business <laughs> in the event industry so let's come out with something new and i also took I, I took that further and i've actually i'm working with q q communications who are um a, a new uh, a new business fairly they're based in dubai but they've just opened in manchester they've taken over all my social media they've taken over the consultancy and they're about to take over the taylor link corporation because it's time to refresh these are new beginnings these are new opportunities and people want new inspiration and i am banned from um social media i for those that know me i have my own which is liz taylor because it was full of yeah. pictures of my grandchildren so my pr team said you know li really liz you 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 can't do this this is not what business is about so i have my own and now i've got some um, this taylor consultancy and the taylor link corporation and i'm excited sarika because it is difficult at the moment. There is no income coming in. I'm relying on C bills, bounce back loans, furlough and everything else. But I'm doing it with an enthusiasm and a belief that this cannot go on forever. Of course. And we have to keep positive. That's the main, obviously, objective of your talk there. Keep positive and, you know, rediscover the power within yourself. Um, we have a question here from Tracy that says, when creating a brand that deals with different events, would you be so specific? Bear with me, there's lots of questions coming in. Would you be so specific so clients instantly know what you provide or to encompass more than one event, would you have a wider, more general brand? I'm a bit lost there. Do you understand that question? Tracy, can you just type in again what exactly you mean? I think she means that would you be instantly specific with with your events or would you create a wider brand that encompasses multiple events of what you can offer there well my the, the one thing that i never really wanted was, was to be my brand because from a commercial perspective you can't i can't if i sell the taylor link corporation which i'm not doing but if i was doing the taylor link corporation really is me and that was the thing that I had to come to terms with back in March. Um, I am the one with the bonkers ideas. I am the one that can walk up to Prince Charles and stick my hand out and say, do you remember me? That is me. That is my brand. So I, I think that when you create a brand, you have to decide ultimately what you want to do with it. My service is intangible. I'm so, if I sell you a 30th birthday party and I tell you that we're going to do an Ibiza style thing, uh, whatever the concept is, it's intangible. You do not have a clue what you're going to get until you walk in that room. All you have are my set designs, my visuals, my passion, my motivation, my creativity and my experience and my reputation that, that will encourage you to spend not £5,000 but £10,000 so people buy into the brand but what what's what's underneath that brand is what you create and I hope that answers Tracy's question because I struggled a bit with that answer but um, yeah I'm sure sense. Tracy if you've if you've got any further comments on that do type in and we can pick that up with Liz but um, there's another question here from Sally that says after working as a freelancer for many years I've taken the plunge during lockdown to start my own event management company i wasn't going to sink so i have swam what would be your most important piece of advice for sally not to give up sally don't give up follow your dream because if you want it enough you will be able to do it i don't have a crystal ball i can't tell you that you know that at the moment nobody's got any money coming in there is no income but use the time to actually investigate and look at where you want to be in the in the industry what part of you can't be all things to all men do you want to do corporate private do you want to do small do you want, and focus on 
what you want to do and get your head down and do it. 100%, good advice there. Um, you know, you touched earlier on hospitality action and on hospitality rise even, sorry. Can you give us a little bit more detail on that or any kind of spoilers or what that's Want going to be? Want an invitation. <laughs> so invitation when would be lovely, Liz. <laughs> you're coming, you're on the list, you're on my VIP list, Sarita. Listen, um, when this all started and everyone was doom and gloom, I um, contacted Victoria Warehouse, who I worked very closely mm. with, and I said, look, James, I want to throw open these doors. We're going to have one great big bloody party when all this is over. And at the time, it was going to be October. It was going to be this month because we didn't know what, you know, what was ahead of us. And I was, um, you know, as you are, I was with Howard Donald from Take That, as I do, because that's all part of my life. And I said to <laughs> Howard, Howard, I said, I'm going to do a big bash for the hospitality industry. It will be invitation only. They'll pay for their own food and drink. We're going to have food bands. We're going to have bars. We're going to have music. Will you DJ? And he sort of nodded. And that nod to me was a yes, because um, I know Howard well. So he can't get out of that. And then one of my podcasts, I was interviewing Mike Sweeney. And I don't know if you know, but Mike Sweeney had bands in the 60s. He had great, he had punk bands. He had 60s bands. I mean, he's a real music man. And at the very end, I said, Mike, would you perform live at Hospitality Rise? And he said, absolutely, mate, I'm in. So that's what we're doing and as soon as we're able to set a date and it's going to we're, we're going to do it in association with marketing manchester on board and the pa network um which we've just um we, we've just been appointed uh events planners and um collaborating with the pa network so they've got their event next november and i'm going to sort of refresh that and we're gonna have a big party and everyone will come and just that's what hospitality rises and it's going to happen not quite sure when but hopefully next summer sounds fantastic and yeah we'll definitely be there to support you liz don't worry about that Good. um we've got another question here that says what would be your most important piece of advice to give to an event management company at this time i suppose if i'm being really honest it's to be realistic if 100%. you feel that you are not going to make it, then accept that and shut the door. I don't know that if I'm going to make it, but I do know that from May, I have um, a significant amount of business which takes me into the millions, booked in and contracted, but with no deposits. So the loans that I'm negotiating with the bank to keep everything afloat are on that basis. Now, if come March or April, the government believes that we cannot, you know, bring live events back, then I have to decide whether I can continue. And I think that as heartbreaking as it is, but don't, don't be reactive think about it you know i'm very much i i'm an i'm an impulse buyer i'm a bloody nightmare going to selfridge and see a pair of shoes and you know they're in my bag before i and i get home and think about it i think they're going back you know so don't do anything on an impulse think about it there is no rush we are all in the same boat it's nothing that you did or anyone did that's put you here and i think that would be my best bit of advice that's strong advice there yeah definitely agree with that um Back on the mentioning of banned words, what are your thoughts on the word hybrid and do you see a future in hybrid events within the industry? I need to check that out. What does that mean? So oh. hybrid is where you have the live offering and but you also have a virtual element to complement that too. No, so no, listen, you'd have all it's no. all it's all job. It's all jargon. I am, it, you know, I still have a desk diary, okay? I hate using my, I hate using the calendar on my computer. Um, I still have the, the, a blotting pad that I that somebody bought me in 1986 when I set up my business. I am all for live events, and I think that that's what we should focus on. This is great, you know, being able to, to being able to communicate like this, to have the venue and event show. Um, you know, on, through the, it, this is great, but um, as far as events go, and 
you know, to generate income, to put milk on the table, it has to be live events. 100%. And when do you think we'll see, begin to see a recommence of those early next year, March, April? I mean, you mentioned May. I mean, May sounds like a pretty positive. I don't think, oh. I think, I said it from the outset. And, you know, I had a million people okay. phone me, people yeah. that hadn't even people that hadn't spoken to me for years and some people that ignored me when they saw me all of a sudden got on the phone but i i believe end of may may bank holiday weekend june is when we will see live events and if we don't then i think it's the end of the industry as we know it oh, hopefully not <laughs> let's try and take it back onto a positive one um, <laughs> can we let um anyone know what super events you have lined up for next year if we get the option to recommence is there anything well, is what celebrity wise that we can tease well out we're all or? dabbling we're, we're all dabbling in and out of celebrity events but again you know they can't commit so i have a very close association with rosie nixon who's the, the editor of hello magazine and, and you know when i say these celebrity contacts i don't say them glibly i've worked at uh, worked at them and there is a mutual respect so i always get sort of my ear to the ground and i always get first dibs you know who's getting married and who's doing what but, and nobody can plan anything at the moment the events that i've got in interestingly enough are all private events, high net worth private events, which was um, an arena that, you know, I, I got involved with those sort of very early on. They're friends, I've nurtured them. Again, they love what I do, they come back. So that's um, the, the, the one that I'm working at most, which through the PA network is the corporate market. And I've got lots of ideas. Uh, we're hoping to do this pod for Christmas. And I know that Jess Southworth, who shouted out, there's a few people are coming on a Zoom call mm. on Friday. And we've come up with a scheme of putting pods in venues for six people uh, with silent discos. And you can dance in your own pod. And they, and they covid friendly and it just means that whilst the venues won't have masses of revenue it just keeps everybody in business a little bit and i also think it enables us to celebrate christmas and christmas is not cancelled so um it you know it, it it's just it's juggling all balls and i i believe yeah so my my the work in the work contracted is private and i'm in touch with a lot of corporate bodies just to have a coffee because you know have a coffee have a drink go and have a bit of lunch do what you can do just send an email to say hi because that way they remember you and that you're the first person that they contact when they want to hold an event again that's always been my ethos fantastic it's a great ethos and you said christmas is obviously not cancelled it's something that we kind of need to reiterate across the industry right now, just to bring, you know, some positivity back. So yeah, we're hundred percent on board with that. Um, we've had a few people message in saying they would like to get in touch with you and contact details. What's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, if they email the, the TLC address, so it's taylor.lyn, L-Y-N-N, at TLC, hyphen ltd.co.uk no hate mail <laughs> and no, hope no not. hate mail and please no job applications because i can't but i will keep you on file if you send your cv but um but i i'm be absolutely thrilled to answer questions um you know put some positivity back out there um talk to groups whatever because i believe um i fiercely believe in what i preach that's great Liz thank you for that we'll put um, that email address up in our chat um, just after your session now hopefully you'll get some nice positive emails coming through no hate mail people <laughs> Liz will track you down <laughs> it's been great having it's been great having you on Liz and as always really refreshing positive honesty and you know that's what we need right now we definitely need that within the industry and we need more people like you well, it's been a pleasure being with you and lots and lots of luck. And hopefully this time next year, we shall be live in Manchester. Hope so. Back to, back to venues and events live, London and Manchester next September. We hope so. Great to see you, Liz. Great. And thank you again. Thank you. Thanks.